Three.
morning, everyone, and welcome to St. Paul's Church. This morning, it is great to be here with you. Uh, you can find our bulletin for this service on our website, um, and uh, you can follow along with the service and all the hymns that we will be singing that way, or you can, um, if you don't have it, that's all right. You can just sort of be along uh, for the ride of our worship this morning. Um, it is very good, as I say, to be here with you on this beautiful morning. And let us begin by singing our opening hymn, number 541, Come Labor On. Christ our Lord, 
Amen. Amen. with compassion for the sake of our Savior Jesus Christ who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit one God now and forever Amen, Amen. reading from Genesis. The Lord appeared to Abraham by the oaks of Mamre as he sat at the entrance of his tent in the heat of the day. He looked up and saw three men standing near him. When he saw them, he ran from the tent entrance to meet them and bowed down to the ground. He said, My Lord, if I find favor with you, do not pass by your servant. Let a little water be brought and wash your feet and rest yourselves under the tree. Let me bring a little bread that you may refresh yourselves, and after that, you may pass on, since you have come to your servant. So they said, do as you have said. And Abraham hastened into the tent to Sarah and said, make ready quickly three measures of choice flour, knead it and make cakes. Abraham ran to the herd and took a calf, tender and good, and gave it to the servant who hastened to prepare it. Then he took curds and milk and the calf that he had prepared and set it before them. And he stood by them under the tree while they ate. They said to him, Where is your wife Sarah? And he said, There, in the tent. Then one said, I will surely return to you in due season, and your wife Sarah will have a son. And Sarah was listening at the tent entrance behind him. Now Abraham and Sarah were old, advanced in age. It had ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of women. So Sarah laughed to herself, saying, After I have grown old and my husband is old, shall I have pleasure? The Lord said to Abraham, Why did Sarah laugh and say, Shall I indeed bear a child now that I am old? Is anything too wonderful for the Lord? At the set time, I will return to you in due season, and Sarah shall have a son. But Sarah denied, saying, I did not laugh, for she was afraid. He said, Oh, yes, you did laugh. The Lord dealt with Sarah as he had said, and the Lord did for Sarah as he had promised. Sarah conceived and bore Abraham a son in his old age, 
at the time of which God had spoken to him. Abraham gave the name Isaac to the son whom Sarah bore him. And Abraham circumcised his son Isaac when he was eight days old, as God had commanded him. Abraham was a hundred years old when his son Isaac was born to him. Now Sarah said, God has brought laughter for me. Everyone who hears will laugh with me. And she said, Who would ever have said to Abraham that Sarah would nurse children? Yet I have borne him a son in his old age. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I love the Lord because he has heard the voice of my supplication, because he has inclined his ear to me whenever I called upon him. How shall I repay the Lord for all the good things he has done for me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his servants. O Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant and the child of your handmaid. You have freed me from my bonds. I will offer you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people, in the courts of the Lord's house, in the midst of you, O Jerusalem. Hallelujah. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand. We boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. For while we were still weak, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. Indeed, rarely will anyone die for a righteous person. Though perhaps for a good person someone might actually dare to die. But God proves his love for us, and that while we still were sinners, Christ died for us. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be God. to God. and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. 
Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Then Jesus summoned his twelve disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to cure every disease and every sickness. These are the names of the twelve apostles. First, Simon, also known as Peter, and his brother Andrew. James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John. Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector. James, son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus. Simon, the Cananean, and Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed him. These 12 Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Go, no, go nowhere among the Gentiles and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, proclaim the good news. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons, you received without payment, give without payment. Take no gold or silver or copper in your belts, no bag for your journey or two tunics or sandals or a staff, for laborers deserve their food. Whatever town or village you enter, find out who in it is worthy and stay there until you leave. As you enter the house, greet it. If the house is worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if it is not worthy, let your peace return to you. If anyone will not welcome you or listen to your words, shake off the dust from your feet as you leave that house or town. Truly, I tell you, it will be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah on the day of judgment than for that town. See, I am sending you out like sheep into the midst of wolves. So be wise as serpent and innocent as doves. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. in your steadfast faith and love, that through your grace we may proclaim your truth with boldness and minister your justice with compassion. Remember that it's the job of the collect, of that prayer that we call the collect, to collect us, to put us all on the same page as we begin worship and in the right frame of mind as we hear the scripture and as we prepare ourselves for communion. There isn't any special occasion today. We're at the beginning of a long stretch of what's called ordinary time. Not exactly a season of the year like at Advent or Lent, just ordinary time, when there are no special events on the church calendar for many months to come. And how appropriate that in the ordinary time, of our ordinary life, we pray for the state of our household. Keep, O oh Lord, your household, the church, in your steadfast faith and love. However, I can't say that we are in ordinary time without acknowledging that so much doesn't feel ordinary right now. Our worship today is not ordinary. We're in the parish hall not in the church. What we mean by the term gather, as in we gather for worship, isn't what that has ordinarily meant in the whole history of the church. 
Ordinary is a state of being that's hard to come by right now. But that isn't all bad. The last few months, especially the last few weeks, have made us all pause and reconsider what has, in the past, been ordinary. For almost everyone, individuals, communities, and the entire country, this has been a time of extraordinary introspection. As a culture, we've been taking a hard look at what we have accepted as ordinary, as business as usual, and concluded that it isn't acceptable. It's as though we are rejecting what has been ordinary and seeking a more just alternative. This is good, but it certainly is not easy, which is why it is so long overdue. It's overdue in our civic dialogue and it's also overdue in our dialogue here within the household of the church. There are two parts to our collect, to our prayer today. And it's important that we take some time to really think about what it says and what it is that we're asking God to do for us. The first part is keep, O Lord, your household, the church, in your steadfast faith and love. It feels natural to think of ourselves as a household since we're part of a church family. When we say that, we mean this church family of St. Paul's. But of course, it goes much further. This same exact collect is being prayed today in Anglican, by Anglican Christians all around the globe. In every part of the Anglican Communion, from England to New Zealand to Hong Kong to Healdsburg. In our prayer this morning, we are all being collected into the same household. And of course, it's not just about us. The church, with a capital C, means all Christians everywhere. Consider the importance of households and what they mean to us from the very beginning of our lives. It's where our roots are planted. It's the environment that brings us up, shapes us, and sends us out again into the world. It gives us our stability, our orientation in life, and to a large extent determines how we will function and support ourselves when we grow up. Our whole identity and purpose in life is grounded in the household we come from and that we later create for ourselves. Since it's God's household we're talking about here, understanding its parameters is a lot more complex. If indeed we believe what we say about God, that God is the creator of heaven and earth and everything, all life in between. How could any human child not be a child of God and therefore a member of God's household, whether they know it or not? So often Christians of every stripe have volunteered to be the Lord's surveyor, to demarcate the boundaries of the kingdom of God and pronounce who is in and who is out. But if, as Paul says in our passage from Romans for today, Jesus died for us while we were yet sinners, and even the ungodly are part of God's plan in Jesus Christ, then who is left out of God's household? We may not all be equally aware that we are God's beloved children, but surely that only puts more burden on those of us who believe we are to be welcoming of our sisters and brothers in this household that has welcomed us. Keep, O oh Lord, your household, the church, in your steadfast faith and love. Notice it's God's faith and love that pulls us into this household and keeps us here. It's God's faith in us 
and God's love for us, which leads to the second part of this prayer. That through your grace, we may proclaim your truth with boldness and minister your justice with compassion. Again, it's God's truth and God's justice, not our own. We pray we are given grace to proclaim God's truth and be ministers of God's justice. That is the work of our household to proclaim truth, and to be ministers of justice. That is our family business. It's the birthright of the church. Here's the question that I believe we, as the church, as members of this Christian household, have to be asking ourselves right now in the wake of everything going on around us. How are we going to proclaim the truth and be ministers of justice as we and so many others face up to the reality of violence against people who aren't white. What does it mean for us to be truth tellers and ministers of justice when laid bare in front of us are the disproportionate effects, including death, of COVID-19 for people of color. The front page of our local paper yesterday called COVID-19 a racial pandemic because 75% of all the cases in Sonoma County are born by Latinos who represent 27% of the whole population. How far does our prayer extend for proclaiming truth with boldness and being ministers of justice? What exactly are our hopes and intention when we pray this? Let me share with you something that I read this week from a fellow Christian minister, a brother in Christ within our household, named Marc Antoine Laverin. He writes, as a black clergy person, I am particularly encouraged by the number of Christians who have finally spoken out against police brutality. At the same time, as numerous Christians have finally chosen to name racism, I am woefully skeptical of new allies who have rushed to protest without examining the ways in which their own theologies continue to nurture it. He then makes the point that there has been a theological racism embedded in American Christianity that will lead some people to believe that the fight for justice is merely adjacent to evangelism, but somehow different from the real work of ministry. He writes, for some, this is still just a societal issue and not a theological one. He continues, prior to this moment, new allies have preached a gospel of Jesus devoid of justice. They failed to make the theological connection that Jesus and justice are, in fact, mutually inclusive. To invoke Jesus and then to invoke justice is redundant. Every time we invoke the name of Jesus, we commit ourselves to the ministry of justice. Every time we invoke the name of Jesus, we declare the psalmist decree that justice and righteousness are the foundations of God's throne. Every time we invoke the name of Jesus, we summon the messianic prophecy that the spirit of the Lord was upon Jesus to preach the good news to the poor, to set the prisoners free from the Roman industrial complex, and to proclaim liberty to those who were oppressed. Every time we invoke the name of Jesus, we remember that Jesus was convicted of a crime he did not commit, received an unfair trial, and was sentenced to a state-sanctioned lynching on a tree. The ministry of justice is the ministry of Jesus. We cannot divorce our theology from the ministry of justice. To do so 
is to divorce ourselves from Jesus himself. That is what Mark Antoine Leverin wrote this past week. We, we pray today. Keep, O oh Lord, your household, the church, in your steadfast faith and love, that through your grace we may proclaim your truth with boldness and minister your justice with compassion. How far do our aspirations for proclaiming truth with boldness and being ministers of justice extend? And how are we going to incorporate these aspirations into our ordinary lives? Will the incendiary flames of Pentecost that burned away the fear and reticence of those first disciples keep burning in our hearts? We need them to, because the truth of the gospel depends upon it. Either we share the kingdom of God, or we make a mockery of it. This is our prayer, our hope, and our challenge. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us reaffirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As we celebrate the enkindling energy and unspeakable closeness of God in Holy Spirit, we bring our concerns and hopes, saying, Hear us, Hear us. renew Hear us. us. The Spirit creating enables a universe of creatures to exist, evolve, and flourish. For our planet, with its diverse community of life, for working lands, ranches, vineyards, orchards, and farms, for places of beauty and refreshment, parks, gardens, and backyards, we bring our concerns and our hopes. Hear, Hear us, us, renew Hear us. us. The Spirit anointing was present with Jesus in baptism and is present with us. For all Christians using their gifts and service for the common good, for those who lead us in ministry, Bishops Michael and Megan, Sally, our rector, Linda, our priest associate, Paul, our director of music, Jim, our cantor, and Tim, who connects us through technology. For our diocese and all its congregations, but especially Shepherd by the Sea, Gualala, St. Paul's, Benicia, and St. John's, Petaluma, we bring our concerns and hopes. Hear yeah. us. Renew, renew us. The Spirit, speaking through the prophets of old, continues to prompt wise leaders and heralds. For civic leaders, especially Donald, Gavin, Jared, Mike, Jim, James, and Leah. 
for journalists and those who inform and influence public opinion, for public health leaders, researchers, healthcare workers, and all involved in responding to the COVID-19 epidemic, we bring our concerns and hopes. Hear, Hear us, us, renew us. us. The spirit spurring your people to action in every age does so in this moment. For the torch of liberty which has been lit in this land and for those who uphold it now, let us not hide from its light. For police, protesters, and all who make this country their home, we bring our concerns and hopes. Hear yeah. us, yeah. renew yeah. us. The spirit descending divine love links us with God and one another. For those suffering anxiety, depression, or isolation. For those in our community who are unemployed, underemployed, with that, without adequate shelter or wholesome food. For those who serve through Reach for Home, Farm to Pantry, Healdsburg Shared Ministries, and St. Paul's Shower Ministry. For those who are ill and those commended to our prayers, Barbara, Roger, Sylvan, Bobby, Jen, Deborah, Ari, Doug, Leah, Joan, Linda, Michael, Richard, Patricia, Sherry, Robin, Suzanne, Richard, Wanda, Tammy, and those we now name either silently or aloud. We pray for the dead and the dying, especially Helen O'Hagan and those we now name either silently or aloud. Andrew, Esther, and Sam. We bring our concerns and hopes. Hear yes. us, renew, renew us. us. All this we ask, O Abba, Father, encouraged by the spirit of the risen Christ. Almighty God, by your Holy Spirit, you have made us one with your saints in heaven and on, our, uh, and on earth. Grant that in our earthly pilgrimage, we may know ourselves to be surrounded by your love, power, and mercy. Set our minds on you, that we may see with new eyes the reality of your love for all people. We ask this for the sake of Jesus Christ, in whom your love has been made manifest through the Holy Spirit now and always. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we, we confess, confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with each of you. Peace be with all of you. It is very good to be here um, with everyone today. Um, I do want to, uh, you see we've got um, our lovely altar set up here. Um, I would like to, um, Tim, do you mind if we just sort of pan around this room? And I, I want to do that just so that you can see everything going on in our parish hall. Even though, of course, this is not an optimal way for us to be worshiping for the long haul, I'm feeling like there's something very holistic and inclusive about it because we have our altar, we have our shower ministry, we have the kitchen and the food program happening, um, we have our new unbelievable tech set up here, <laughs> um, Paul is here, Jim is here, um, 
And I'd just like for you to get a, a sort of a feel for what it's like here in the parish hall. Um, you know, for the time being, there's something, for the first time in my seven or eight years here, I'm feeling like we've got all this sort of centrally located in the neighborhood. So, um, as you can see, all of our regular ministries, all the regular ministries of the church are ongoing. And um, we do appreciate your ongoing support for those ministries. Um, if you are a pledging member of St. Paul's, we very much appreciate your continued pledge. If you're visiting or you're not a pledging member, we do ask that um, you contribute to our church so that we can keep going with our shower ministry, which has kind of also become a food ministry. We are getting weekly food now from um, Healdsburg Shared Ministries that they've um, always put together food bags, but now we're sort of getting more food that we hand out um, pretty much every day that we're here. Um, also food from Farm to Pantry and um, Reach for Home has some gardens that we're also sort of being a staging area for um, sending fresh produce out to the clients for Reach for Home. So um, it's good that we can be open and continue to do that. Um, it's a real blessing, and I thank you for your support in doing it and ask that um, if you are not currently supporting us financially that you do so. Um, we have other very, very exciting and important announcements. Um, the first announcement that I am terribly excited about and want to address with you is regarding the survey that our members received this past week about which service you will be most likely to attend or that you feel comfortable to attending to attend when we reopen in July. We anticipate that our first service will be on July 5th. We're going to continue doing this um, full music service that we're doing. Paul is collecting all of our voices and putting them together. Um, he's playing his own organ at home, and that it, and we're, we're recording it and putting it on the computer so that we can all hear it. And this is a full liturgy that we would normally do gathering in church. And we're going to continue to do this every Saturday um, so, and broadcast it on Sunday. It won't be a live stream, but it will be broadcast on Sunday mornings. At the same time, we will have two, possibly three, shorter services on Sunday morning here in the parish hall. We've worked out how we can fit 25 people in here, which is the maximum that we can do in this space for a short Eucharist service. So, um, but we want to hear from you as to if you're likely to come to that short Eucharist service and what time you're most likely to come so that we can spread our services out and make sure that we can accommodate the most number of people possible. We don't want to turn anyone away who wants to be here. So that um, you received a survey, please fill it out if you haven't already and send that, um, re return it to the office or to Katie Ross, and I'm not sure what the instructions are, but you just hit send and it'll get where it needs to go. Um, also, our construction project is going like crazy. If you drive by Matheson Street, do drive by Matheson Street, take a look and see how quickly things are moving here. As a result of this, we are not able at all to use the, do the door on the breezeway. We can only use the Matheson Street doors or this door off the patio. So um, if you come to visit for any reason at all, just you need to remember that. Um, I am going to need to return to North Carolina to see my parents. They're having some issues that um, they need one of their children to come and help them with. So I'm going to be gone. I'm going to leave on a red eye after our church service next Sunday. Um, and we'll be gone that week. And so we are going to take a break for worship on um, June 28th. And in place of our worship, we're going to direct everybody to worship at Church of the Incarnation in Santa Rosa. They also have a 10 o'clock live stream service. And um, we'll make sure that our members can hook up with that service. Also, you're also welcome to see any other service. Churches all over the country are broadcasting and maybe it'll be a good time to, to visit a different church service for just that Sunday. And we appreciate your um, patience with us. Um, 
in needing to do that and sort of take a breather so that we can take care of some other business and prepare, do more preparation for our regathering on July 5th. Meanwhile, our Bible study is continuing. We have it on Zoom and Facebook Live. If you have not been getting an invitation to that Zoom Bible study but would like to, please shoot an email to the office and we'll make sure you get one. And we're having continuing with our morning devotion at 10 a.m. every Monday through Friday. So that's another option. Um, I would like for us to remember our um, the birthdays in our congregation right now with the birthday prayer. This week, we have Karen Ertel, Marcy Muhlman, Elizabeth Taylor, and Suzanne Kurtz. Please join with me in saying our birthday prayer for them. Watch over your children, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall. And in their hearts, may your peace, which passes understanding, abide all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering to God. give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, it is right, right to give, give our, our thanks, thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, in fulfillment of his true promise, the Holy Spirit came down from heaven, lighting upon the disciples to teach them and to lead them into all truth uniting peoples of many tongues in the confession of one faith and giving to your church the power to serve you as a royal priesthood and to preach the gospel to all nations. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. <laughs>
Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. died. Christ, Christ is, is risen. risen. Christ will, will come again. again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us remember that we are bound together by the love of God and the offering of Jesus Christ in his body and in his blood. And through our baptism, we are members of the body of Christ, and we all partake of communion with God and with one another as we gather in worship today.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, Father you, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Life is short, and we do not have long to gladden the hearts of those who travel with us. So be swift to love and make haste to be kind. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you, now and always. Amen. Amen. And now let us join together in singing our closing hymn, Lord, You Give the Great Commission.
Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God.